everybody, Chris Thunderlaser, and today we're gonna do our first project on the Aurora Fiber Series. Um, what you're gonna need is your computer, your laser machine, and something metal so that we can test out, make sure that everything is working properly. So one of the first things we're gonna do besides turning it on and make sure that we're connected, we should have had all of that stuff done already. Uh, we want to take our metal card or whatever we're going to use and we want to place it under the autofocus beam. The autofocus beam is further forward, um, closer to the front side of the bed, and then our contour or our laser outline uh, for the marking area is directly centered underneath the Galvo head. So we have two different ones, I might be able to see it. So one is in the center of the lens and the other one is off-centered to the front. So no matter what you do, you're going to have to move this piece to the autofocus sensor, hit autofocus, and then it'll beep three times to let you know that you are focused in. Um, just make sure that you do have your machine on, otherwise this would be blinking. Let's turn it off real quick. Turn it back on. Blinking means that it is not on yet. Uh, while it looks like it is on, there is no power going to the source or the controller. Turn that on, you'll hear our relays click, you'll hear a fan come on. Now we have full power. Now the autofocus will work and your Galvo head will go up and down. So again, place your material, hit the focus, then we will move our material. I like to put it in the middle, so I'm moving my material to the center of the red dot that's projected through the lens. Uh, that's going to be your working area. So we're gonna come closer here and we're gonna kind of show how things line up and then also put a graphic on the computer and work through the settings in Lightburn. All right, so one of the things I like to do before I even get started is create a frame or a tool layer for whatever, whatever I'm working on. So it happens to be that we're working with the business card and the business card size is like 3.4 by 2.1-ish. Uh, the measurements will probably change a little bit depending on where you get it from. But I like to create a frame and once that frame is created, um, we can use that as our bounding box on the laser. The laser is going to admit a, uh, a, a red outline of whatever we're working on. So since I already made this box, let's take a look at the laser. And you can see it outlining. Now, I do like to turn the lights down a little bit so I can see. Uh, we do have that control. Um, I like to keep them off when I'm trying to line stuff up, depending on what it is. It'll just show up better. So right now you can see that if I turn off this frame, my, my red dot is further north than my actual frame. Let me do my frame again. So we can use this red dot to our advantage. I like using it where I position it in the middle. And then on light burn, I can make sure that I'm centered on the actual work area as well. So I'm gonna highlight my frame box that I created. I'm going to use my crosshairs up top and this is going to move it to the center of the page, which should correlate with the center of the bed or the red dot. So I moved it to the center and as you see it moved and now I can hit frame again and this is where I position my material. Um, and of course, you know, we could use the camera. I'm trying to show you how to do this all manually as well. So I have it positioned. Uh, it may take a little bit of manipulation, but you're gonna get it the best that you can. And I think that's good. We have already focused it. Um, this is now aligned to the artwork. And now let's put some, some text in there to test it out. Have our business card or whatever piece of material you have. Uh, ready to go on the bed of the machine. Let's look at Lightburn and what I'm gonna do is I've got some uh, artwork saved in my art library. I'm going to pull my Thunder logo over and center those. All right, so that's perfectly centered. Now let's go over to our cuts and layers and we can see that this red outline is actually a 
layer, a cut or fill layer. So let's turn that to a T1, our tool layer. And now it could be used as a frame only. Uh, it's not going to impact your cutting. It's basically just some boundaries letting you know where you need to be. And then we have our thunder, our logo that we're going to engrave centered inside of my business card. So let me select that. And I'm going to go for, you know, our initial testing, no matter which uh, power machine you have, what wattage machine, this should work for all of them. Um, I'm going to do 400 millimeters per second. And I'll keep it at 30% power. And then if you are running a machine that does not have a Q-pulse, you're the lower the frequency, the stronger the, uh, the laser. Uh, think of it like sandpaper, the, the lower the frequency, the tougher the grit. So basically, you're sanding something down initially with a, a rough grit, and then you're moving to a lighter grit for finishing. Same idea with uh, removing metal um, or engraving. And right now, I'm going to put it in the middle. I'm going to use a generic setting of 100 and 100. Now, each machine and each source has a different uh, threshold of what you can use. On a MOPA series, like the one that I'm using here, my frequency goes from 1 to 4,000. If you're using a standard non-MOPA, uh, let's say a 60 watt, maybe yours is 50 to 100 kilohertz. So just make sure you're aware of your threshold of frequency settings um, and you know use the lowest one for your initial testing. The higher frequencies are going to be used as cleaning passes. Okay, and I have it set for 2,000 lines per inch. Uh, let's just do 500. If you are used to a gantry uh, CO2 laser, this machine is capable of much higher resolution. So uh, just keep that in mind. We're starting at uh, what you would normally push the gantry, gantry to. So I'm set. I'm going to click OK. I think I have my settings good enough. Now there's lots of other things that we can do from scan angle, cross hatch, which would make it go, uh, you know, zero degrees to the top and then 90 degrees right to left. You could do 45 degrees. You could do all types of cool things to mitigate any type of lines um, in your artwork. It's pretty cool, uh, but this is all stuff that you learn as you're playing with it. Okay, now I'm gonna hit the frame button. And we can see on the laser that we do have a nice frame right where we have it positioned on the machine or on, in Lightburn. So what I'm gonna do is hit start and it's going to automatically go. Um, now, if you look at the screen on Lightburn real quick, we can do a hull, which if you look at the, the projected image, it is now kind of rounded. What it's doing is trying to mimic the edges of the entire um, graphic. I can do contour as well, and now you can see it is actually outlining what's going to get lasered. So you can see it says Thunder Laser, um, and that will be a good indication that you have your artwork set up correctly. All right, so let's hit start and see how this works. All right, and you can see that it did a zero degree, so from the bottom, moving up to the top, and then it did a 90 degree from the right to the left. And looking in light burn, let's look at our layer, and we did keep cross hatch on when we set it up, so automatically we know it's going to do that. And of course, you can go to your preview Select your image, go to your preview, 
And if we scrub through what's going to happen, you'll actually see that it did go from the bottom to the top and then across from right to left. Exactly what we wanted. Now, that pretty much shows you that the machine works, that gives you a good idea of how to set it up and how to uh, do some test settings. The rest of it is going to be how do I get the result and the colors and the tint that I want by the settings that are available. Again, make sure you know your frequency range. Uh, if you have a MOPA machine, make sure you know your frequency and your Q-Pulse range. And then also um, keep in mind of the analogy of sandpaper. The lower the frequency, the more rough or the more force being used to remove the material. And the higher the frequency, the lighter or softer touch you're going to get. All right, I hope this helps get you started and on to your first project.